Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Stampin' Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you from all around the United States and around the world coming in. We've been seeing where everybody's reporting coming in from, and we have people from everywhere, South Africa. Where else, Tom? We saw people from Venice, Florida, which is a place we like to visit, from Toronto, from Australia. all over the place. Where? Australia. Australia. New yeah. Australia. Oh my gosh. Wow, you guys. I absolutely love having you all here. And it is so much fun to get together on a Tuesday night for a little bit of crafting time. Yes, thank you so much about my hair. Rena got to me again. <laughs> Before you know it, I'm telling you, I'm going to be, it's going to be like Narnia around here. It's going to be all white. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, tonight we're going to be playing with the new card kit. We're still making lots of things with the new card kit. It's still only October, so we've got tons of time to make holiday projects. And I thought it would be fun to use the Snowflake set, the Blizzard set. I did a five-minute card video using this set, but I wanted to make another card for you, and I want to show you a fun way to color this. Now, I want to color it with some Prismacolor pencils and Gamsaw, but I want to show you how I'm going to be able to see it because I'm going to do white on white. And uh, this just gives it a very ethereal kind of look, very soft and peaceful, and I think you're going to like it. Now, if you don't have Prismacolor pencils and Gamsaw, that's okay. You can do this with Copic markers. You can also do it with watercolor. Just if you're doing it with watercolor, make sure you use the right kind of paper. Watercolor paper will work better. Okay, so um, before we get started, almost forgot, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, everybody. Hey, how are you? I'm doing better than horrible. Well, that's all we can ask for these days, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, and I'm loving your hair too, but uh, mm -hmm. I have to say it's it's a little confusing sometimes. Why is that? Because <laughs> you've never been blonde. I know. Ever. So, you ever. Know, I was born with like the darkest brown hair and I've had the darkest brown hair my whole life. Our whole marriage of almost how how long have we been married? Yes like 37 years almost. Yes. Yes. And maybe more than that. I don't even know anymore. I know. So, but look, look at it like it's a new relationship. Okay. <laughs> maybe you should go blonde too. <laughs> we could just be two new people together. <laughs> okay hey we'll see how long it lasts i like Roll it it's that. it's easy you know <laughs> oh my goodness all right well uh i appreciate that you know they say as you get older you should go lighter so <laughs> i'm going lighter getting a lot lighter i actually like it though it's different it's fun you know something new it's only hair right it will grow but we'll talk about that later because <laughs> I have issues with my hair. Okay, so why don't we take a look at the stamp set we're going to do tonight. We're going to use this one right here. This is Blizzard. And I love this snowflake set. And I'll tell you why. Um, because unlike a lot of snowflake sets that I've done in the past, I've done very chunky ones that are solid chunky. And I've done some very uh, skinny ones. But this one I love because it's got open spaces that you can color. And I think that that is so much fun to be able to color these in. So that is what we are going to do. All right. So we're going to start with a little bit of embossing magic. We're going to use the embossing magic pad because I'm going to emboss all of these snowflakes on here in white. So if you're just tuning in, and um, I start to craft and you're thinking, this is the most boring crafting project ever. It's because the first part of this is pretty boring because I'm gonna be stamping these things using some of the Gina K Designs embossing and watermark ink. Now, if you don't have this ink, you can use Versamark. You can also use white pigment ink um, or any kind of ink that you can emboss. So I'm gonna use this tonight and then I'm gonna emboss it in white. So I'm telling you, this is going to be kind of a dull card at first because you're just going to see a lot of white. But I promise we're going to bring it to life and you're going to love it. All right. So I'm going to use a block for stamping tonight. Uh, I'm going to use a couple blocks because some of these are smaller. 
but I decided to use a block because when you're using embossing ink, you don't really have to worry about stamping it more than once. And you can see, I have to, I kind of like putting the snowflake on in this position because I like it to be straight up and down, but it's a little big for the block. So if I turn it a little bit like that, there we go. I can fit it on this block. Okay. So I'm going to start with the embossing magic pad and I am going to rub that all over the surface of this. And this is just going to remove static and any like oil or residue I have on my hands from my lotion, all that kind of stuff. All righty. And remember, um, as we get more into static season, that's what winter is around here. It's static season. You're going to need to make sure that you really don't forget to do that. Okay, I'm going to start with some of the embossing and watermark ink. Boy, we have a troll there. Is that a troll? <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's an emoji filled troll. Okay, and I'm going to ink that up real well because I want to make sure I get it nice and inky. And I have used this before with embossing and watermark ink, and I never clean it well enough. So, okay, here we go. I'm going to start right in the center, and I'm going to try to make this a little more straight up and down. So, we'll do that. It's not really necessary though because snowflakes do not fall straight up and down. This one is going to be a little tilted, but that's okay. All right, now it's hard for me to see that. So I'm going to emboss it right away with some white Gina K Designs Fine Detail White Powder. And I wanna make sure there's none anywhere else. Let's see, there we go. Okay, I don't see any anywhere, maybe a little bit there. And if you do have any strays anywhere, you can use something like a little paintbrush just to dust away the excess. All right. I met a friend today and we were talking about embossing. We were talking about how embossing, especially gold and silver embossing, is kind of like the uh, the gateway drug to stamping and making cards. The first time people see embossing, it's just so magical. And I think you guys will all agree that it is an exciting thing. Look, I'm being good today. I'm using a clothes pin. All right, I'm going to heat this up just a little bit because if I start with a heat, a hot tool, then it makes it a little easier to melt the embossing powder more quickly and I have less uh, bending and curling of my card. So, all righty. All right, here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. Now, once I emboss this, then even though it's still a little dull for you guys, because I think the embossing powder isn't hard to see on the screen, it's very, very easy for me to see it on the screen. And that will make it easy for me to know where to place my other snowflakes. So that's why I kind of like to do them one at a time. Can they see that at all, Tom? Yes. I think like that. Yeah, you can see it. Okay. So... I'm only going to do one big one, and here I go, not cleaning my stamp again, but that's me. And then I'm going to pick another one here. Now, I think I'm going to use this one. This one doesn't have a lot to color, and so, again, I don't want this video to last forever, so we'll do a couple of these on the card. So this one, this is one that I haven't used yet, so I'm going to just rub my fingers all over it. Okay. I like this one, though, for coloring. I think it's going to be really pretty. So I'm going to put that one down here. I might also put it up here. And I'm going to cut this whole thing out with um, the Master Layouts 2 die set when I'm done. But I didn't want to cut it out beforehand. And I'll tell you why. Because when you're doing embossing like this, you want to make sure that... Um, it doesn't get all caught up in the stitches. And the Master Layouts 2 die set has a lot of stitches on it. So it's easier to do this. And then if you want to like tilt it a little bit in any one direction, you can. All right, that's looking good. I can see that. I think I'll put this same design down here. All right. Oh, good. I'm glad to see it. some of you are starting to get your orders. That's good. Yeah, we've, we've been working so hard to try to get orders out as quickly as possible. 
there were a lot of orders for this release. And we appreciate that. We really do. And I know it's frustrating because everybody wants their stuff. So I get it. But they're working really hard and we're getting pretty caught up. All right. So I just have a goober there. So I'm going to try to get rid of that. <sighs> Might see that a little bit. Um, all right. Let me get a smaller paintbrush for this. Just got to make sure I don't have like black ink on this paintbrush because I do a lot of things with these paintbrushes that I do everything but paint with my paintbrushes. Okay, that's going to be better than horrible. And if it's not, we'll just cut it off with the dye. <laughs> All right, we'll start up here. Like I said, this is the boring part. But. I love coloring in these snowflakes. I had so much fun just practicing a little bit to see how it would come out. Okay, and you're gonna see how pretty it looks because I'm gonna show you a trick for older eyes. I don't know about you, but I have old eyeballs. And old eyeballs are tough when you're trying to color white on white. I'm telling you, it's, it's not easy. So I'll show you a little trick for older eyeballs like mine. <laughs> Welcome everyone, it's getting busy around here. Wow, I see so many of you. It's great to have you here. Ooh, the chat is busy tonight too. You have old eyeballs too, Dawn? Good, I'm not alone, okay. So this one's gonna go down here like that. And whenever you're inking, whenever you're stamping, especially with embossing ink, just give it a minute to transfer to the paper. You don't have to pull it up really super fast. I'm gonna do this one here and see. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Okay, I'll do the same one down here. Do you need a tool for goobers? For goobers? Yeah. Uh, uh <laughs> like a goober tool? Yeah, goober gone. Goober gone. <laughs> is that something that you came up with, Tom? Or is that? Well, I just saw you get a little bit uh, you kind of slowed you down a little bit when you were dealing with the goober. You didn't have a. a I didn't have a goober gone tool. <laughs> ready to go to get rid of that. I need that tool. A goober gone. Oh, this one looks like a mandala. This is so pretty. This one. I can't wait to do that one. Okay, and then I'm gonna fill in with a few snowflakes that don't need to be colored. So we've got a couple of those here. And I'm going to add some of those into the mix. So this one is a good one because it doesn't need to be colored at all. And we'll just do a little embossing, I mean, a little ink blending over that. So, goober gone. <laughs> what is old eyes? Jilly, old eyes are eyeballs that are over 50. <laughs> I don't know. Mine are old. Okay, I'm going to put one of these here. I'm going to put one of these over here on the opposite side. Again, it's just easier for me to just do this part first. Oh, I like this one. I like these. There's a couple little fat snowflakes in here. And they uh, they look good. It's good good in the mix here. Ooh, ooh. I wonder if I'll even see these after I cut this out. But you know, you can't take chances. You got to fill in the space just in case. Here's a little stick one. I'll do this one next. Shelly's watching you along with watching the Phillies. Oh my gosh, how are the Phillies doing? You know, I'm from Philadelphia. I didn't know if you know that. So is Tom. We met in Philadelphia. I was born and raised there, and so was Tom. Elkins Park, we met, right? That's true. We met in Elkins Park. I'm from Elkins Park. Tom's from the city. He's a city boy. I was a suburban girl. But I don't know. I mean, if you live 10 minutes outside the city, you're from the city, right? That's right. Okay. And then I'm going to add one more here and one more here. I'm going to do the same one because I really like this snowflake. They won the last one. Oh, good. That's good to hear. 
I'm going to do one right here. And one down here. I watched the Packers over the weekend, and I still haven't fully recovered. Easy does it. <laughs> I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> but I'm glad to hear the Phillies are doing well. Now all my Wisconsin friends are saying, you should be going for the Brewers, but, you know. Okay. I like them all. Okay, I'm almost done this, and then we'll get a little ink on here because that's going to help us a lot. Now, I'm going to just check this real quick to make sure that I have enough snowflakes on here that it's not going to look weird and empty anywhere. So I'm going to check it with my master layouts too. Yep, I think that's going to be good because I'm going to cut it right about up there. Okay, very good. Okie dokie. So let's get some ink. Now, I, the color that I'm going to use for inking this, I want to just create a very, very light haze. So I'm going to use a turquoise because the colors that I'm going to use are to color are going to blend really nicely with turquoise. I'm going to flip this over too because I have a lot of embossing powder on there and I don't want to get it all in my ink. So let's find some sea glass. So I'm going to go just a little heavy in the centers of these snowflakes, but not too heavy because I definitely want to um, use my colored pencils. That's really important that I don't ink very heavy because I don't want, you know, to color everything in and then the colors won't work on the colored pencils. So I'm going to ink this up here. And then very, very light handed, I'm going to start adding a little bit of color. And hopefully you can see these snowflakes rising out of the mist. Can you see that, Tom? I can see it rising from the mist, yes. <laughs> okay, I'll go in a little closer. All right, oh, the eagles are doing well too, Tom. Did you see that comment? Mm -hmm. Everybody but the pack. It's all right, it's okay. I'm not bitter. What was the trick for old eyes? The old eye trick. This is what I'm doing right now. I could have just tried to color this white on white, but I can't see it. So if I put this on top and I mist over these snowflakes, then I can see the white lines of the snowflakes better. And I'll be able to color inside those little open spaces. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I'm just gonna do those there and let me get a paper towel. This is gonna look so pretty when I start coloring, I promise. Okay, I know you guys can see the snowflakes now. And then when you do that, you kind of wipe off the excess ink. And so now you can see the snowflakes and you can see inside the areas that you want to color. All right, now I'm going to add a second color of the mist on here because I think it needs it. And I think the color I'm going to use is maybe a little bit of apple mint. Try that because my last couple of cards, I've been using the purple. I've been doing a lot of blues and purples. And even though this is gorgeous in blues and purples, I think I'm going to go with my other winter combination of blue and green. All right, so we'll get a little apple mint on here. Okay, and now I'm just going to highlight these other snowflakes here in some of this green. A little bit of green on here. And you guys remember, I always post really high quality photos of my cards in our Facebook group and also on YouTube and my, on my community tab. So if you're, you know, looking for a better quality to be able to see this a little bit better, check that out later. Now, I'm going to go a little heavier into, I'm like, I'm like turning my brush kind of like 
mushing it down a little bit because I got a lot of ink in there. And if I mush it down a little bit, see how that it starts to catch in the little grooves of these snowflakes? I catch a little bit of that color there and it just deepens the snowflakes so you can see them a little bit more because these aren't going to have any colored pencil on them. So I'm going to just add that in there so that you can see them a little bit better. And then I'm going to go back with my brush and blend that all into the blue a little bit better. Okay. All right. Now we can go back over that a little bit and blend in a little more of that turquoise over those areas so they're not too green. And then we'll get started on the snowflakes themselves. The coloring. See, I'm blending some of that blue in there and that just takes some of that harshness of the green away. Okay, alrighty. I think I'll go a little bit more with the blue since I'm gonna be using blue and green pencil and I'm gonna go a little darker on that. So just add a little more of that in there. Go a little bit in the center. Okay. All right. And again, I'm going to take my um, my piece of paper towel here and clean all that up. This way, there's nothing resting on that embossing powder. And now it's time to break out some Prismacolor pencils. Somebody asked if I was using Prismacolor pencils tonight and what type I use. So there are two types of Prismacolor pencils. There are the Premier and the Scholar. There may be more, um, but those are the ones that most people ask. Do I get the Premier or do I get the Scholar? Definitely get the Premier because the Scholar pencils have a lot of... Um, the scholar ones are very hard. They're really, they seem to be made more for drawing and less for coloring where you're actually drawing with the colors. They're like a harder pencil. And the Prismacolor Premier pencils are very soft. Okay, so I'm gonna sharpen this up a little bit just to get a nice point on that. I'm gonna have to replace the batteries on that soon. And I'm gonna start by coloring just a little bit down at the bottom of each of these little areas of the snowflake, just a little bit. Okay. Because we're gonna use Gamsol tonight. If you don't have Gamsol, I know some of you over in Europe don't have access to Gamsol, you can use the lavender spike oil and I'm sure that there are similar blending mediums, but I don't know what all the names are. I know Zestit is popular over there. It's made from oranges. It really smells very delightful too. So I'm gonna go around the perimeter of this. Okay, so that's gonna be turquoise. Then my next color is gonna be green. So then I'm gonna move, you see, this one here is my next color, and I'm gonna move up here to do turquoise again. And just a tiny little bit, you can see I'm not putting a lot of pencil on there because I do want it to kind of fade out when I use the, the Gamsol. This is just one of those cards that's so relaxing to make if you like to color. Let's see here green. This is turquoise. Okay. Yeah, so back to the hair. You know, I know it's kind of scary to do your hair like a completely different color because it doesn't grow super fast. But, and I have a question about hair not growing fast, Tom. <laughs> I don't know why I'm asking you. I'll ask the ladies out there. I especially don't know why you're asking me. <laughs> I'm going to skip this one. I'm going to go to these end ones. I'm going to ask the ladies, why is it that the hair on your head grows so slow, but if you get a chin hair, 
That thing will grow two inches overnight. I do not understand that at all. Anybody have that answer? How often does that happen? <laughs> More than I like to discuss. <laughs> well, maybe you need some craft or shave lotion. <laughs> That's the word of the day. We're not going any, we're not doing any other words of the day. Craft or shave lotion. Oh my gosh. Do you have drums that go ba dum bump? Because you need them. All right. So now we're going to color in, <laughs> we're going to color in these turquoise parts. Craft or shave lotion. I know, Mother Nature. I don't know. She's going through menopause. Okay, so I'm going to use a Creative Mark blending stump. These are the kind of blending stumps I really like because they're super soft. And when you're using a brand new one, make sure you take something like a little sandpaper like this or a nail file and just rough them up a little bit to make them more porous. And they'll soak up the Gamsol or the uh, Zested or the Lavender Spike Oil, whatever you're using. This is what Gamsol looks like for my new friends. It looks like this. I got mine at one of the big box stores. I think it was Blick Art Supply. Um, but this is what Lavender Spike Oil looks like. And I think this is available in Europe and other countries. I'm not sure about Australia. I think it might be. And then there's a product called Zest It that I know is in the UK because I think it comes from the UK. So I'm just going to put the rest of my Gamsol in there. Not the rest, but some more. And then I am going to... I know everybody's laughing at craft or <laughs> And then I'm going to dip the tip in. Now, when you're dipping the tip in, you don't want to just do that. That's not enough. You want to stick it in there a little bit and just let it absorb some of the Gamsol. And then we're going to take that color and we're going to blend that out like that. I know some of you like it, liked it before, and it's definitely a great card, for, you know, before you even add the colored pencil. You don't have to add the colored pencil, but, um, you know, if you're doing fast cards, but the colored pencil really does look so pretty. And see the way I'm just doing strokes I'm not really going in a circular motion right now. I'm just doing strokes down, just pulling the color from the base of that snowflake area all the way down like that. See how it's just getting nice and smooth looking, but it's staying dark at the base and it's getting lighter as we pull toward the edge there. Okay, see how that looks? All right. So we're gonna do that to all of these little turquoise spots. We're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna pull that color down. But we kind of wanna leave a little bit of it light. Now, if it's not blended in enough, just go ahead and blend it, you know? We're gonna do all of these. Now we can add a second color or you don't have to. You can leave it just this way once you get these colors done. But see, I'm just pulling it down and I'm just kind of just getting it to the edge. It's not a hard thing to do. Um, there is, there's supposed to be a tiny release in October of a new little kit, just a tiny kit, but we're still waiting for some of the products to get here. So um, we're not making any promises that it's going to happen in October, but we're hoping that it happens in October. So I know that's not a great answer, but it's the only one I have. So it's a better than horrible answer. <laughs> and then our illustrators have a brand new release in November, which is very fun. Okay, so you can see how pretty this is coming along, right? Very easy to do. And you'll find that this kind of coloring, I mean, like make some of these panels just to have them ready to go. Because remember, snowflakes are not holiday cards necessarily. There is snow all winter long in some parts of the world, including my part of the world. So you can make a snowflake with a big birthday greeting on it. You can make it a thank you card for after the holidays. Somebody gives you a really nice gift or you're invited to a 
holiday get together, an open house, and you want to send a thank you card afterwards, snowflakes are always appropriate for everything. They're the winter flower. They really are. Okay. So you see how pretty that looks? Just very soft. I did color a little bit in here, so I'm going to just work that in toward the center just to give that a little dimension in there. And I'm going to leave it light in the center like that. Okay. So should I go a little closer, Tom? I know some of you are watching on like a 77-inch TV, so I stated earlier that I'll be upping my retinol and vitamin C serum because, you know, that's got to look bad. <laughs> that's all I can say. That's, that's really close. <laughs> And start putting it everywhere. All right, I'm just smoothing any areas out that just don't look blended enough. Okay, but that looks pretty good. All right, this is a blending stump, Linda. Um, and what did I do for the center? I used the same pencil. I just colored right around the perimeter, and then I used the Gamsol to just blend it into the center, just in a little circular motion around the edge to bring it to the center. But I left a little white spot in there, if you can see that. Okay. All right. So let's go with our next color. And I was thinking, let me get a piece of white cardstock here, because sometimes I like to have a little piece of cardstock close by to see what colors look like before I attempt them. So here's a green that might be pretty. Now, it doesn't look all that great there, but let me get a new blending stump. So you can see I've got red on this blending stump. I don't know if you can see that there, but I want to get that off. So I'm just going to file that red right off because I'm going to be using green, and I don't want any red mixing with my green. So now it's much cleaner. Okay. So we'll do a little blend here of this and just see what this color looks like when it's blended. So does that look like a good green for the apple mint? I'd like to use purple, but if I get purple over any of the green, I don't think it's going to look good. So here's another green. This one is a little brighter. And so I like to just test, and some of you might want to even consider making your own little chart. Ooh, this is a pretty green. See how it's bright and it kind of looks nice next to that apple mint? I think I'm going to go with that one. This one looks a little too olivey. Would you agree? Would you guys agree with me that this one might be the better one? It's a cooler. So I have to be careful. I can't use anything that has a pink base to it. So although pink and purple would look so good, if it mixes with the green, it's going to turn brown. So I have to be careful. So I'm going to stick with green for this. But if I were to do it again, I could, instead of these green areas, I could have used something like lovely lavender. And then I could have used the purples. So let's add a little bit of this green in here. here. And then we'll do a little less on the small ones just so it doesn't take all night to do this because I know this can be a little boring to watch. Although it is helpful to watch it if you're struggling at all with the colored pencils. Just watching somebody do it and then go back and watch this on replay and get your pencils out and just hit pause and do the same thing. It is a good, um, a good thing to do. Okay. Nice music, Tom. Okay. So, almost done here, this part. I can't wait to see what the green looks like blended out. It always looks so much prettier and softer after you blend it out. And you could leave all these other ones without coloring them too. That's another option. Like let's say you're looking at this and you're going, you know what, this is going to be my Christmas card. I love this idea. You could make this big snowflake in the center your focal image and then not do anything with the other ones. And that would work too. I mean, there's no right or wrong. I'm just giving you my interpretation here of what I think would look good but I do like how it makes the snowflake pop off the page a bit. Okay, 
The brand of pencils that I'm using are Prismacolor pencils, and I use the premier kind. All Can right. you go over that list of colors again for the pencils? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't go over it at all. This is aquamarine. That's the turquoise that I used. And then for the green, I used grass green. They're the only two aquamarine and grass green and just so you guys know if you are new here i always list all of the things that i use in the video um, in the description once i'm done the reason i don't do it beforehand is because i honestly don't know until <laughs> i'm done what i'm gonna use so i list them i go back and i edit the description of the video to include all of this information so you can see how easy this is blending. And I know technically it's not really melting the color, but it looks like it's just melting the color. It's kind of, it is kind of melting the wax in the pencil. And then just by, you know, having it darker at the base, it just gives the whole thing so much depth. So this is the kind of thing that's fun to do when you're sitting in a chair watching TV. You could have a bunch of these panels embossed and you can just do all the coloring parts. And then later when you get back to your craft room, you can pull the Gamsol out and you can do all the Gamsol parts because it doesn't have to be done right away. It could, you could let this sit for five years. It'll always work. Oh, I love this. I love the green. I'm going to show you one that I did with purple. Just a snowflake I was coloring. I actually tried to do this for a five minute card video. And after I did the first snowflake, I just shook my head and walked away and did something completely different. But you can see how pretty that looks, huh? Let me show you what the purple and the blue look like together so you can get an idea of what that looks like. So totally different look, right? Very, um, very soft. And this one, you know, this, this stamp set, there's a full die set that is in that kit. So you could cut these out too. So if you like this look, We'll cut this one out later just to show you when I have my die cutting machine out how pretty that looks too if you cut it out. It's just beautiful. And then you could use that as a focal image um, on your card. Yeah, Gamsol is not for everyone. That's why I recommend if, if you don't want Gamsol, try the lavender spike oil. It's made out of lavender. Or try Zest It, which is made out of oranges. All right, so we'll add a little bit of color onto these here. There's not much to color here. Remember I said I like this snowflake because there wasn't much to, to color. It's just these spiky parts. And then a little bit on the edges. And I'm not gonna worry too much about the edges. Because some of these edges are gonna get cut off. And what was the color of the background, the first background that you did? This one? So the ink that I used for this background um, is I used a little bit of um, sea glass and a little bit of apple mint. So we'll just blend that out just to darken those. And then we'll add some green to these too, since there isn't really any green. Ooh, so pretty. Just brings everything to life. Did you use shimmer paper as your base card? No, I used the Gina K Designs Layering Weight White cardstock. And if you haven't tried that yet, you get four little sheets of it to do all of this, which I think you're going to love it. It comes in the kit. So... If you uh, if you get this kit, and I think this kit is getting really limited, but if you get this kit, you will get that cardstock to try. And I highly recommend trying it because I think you're going to love it. And for my overseas friends, um, a lot of the retail stores carry our cardstock. I'm just coloring these in with the pencil, doing a little green dots there. Get my 
other stump, my other blending stump. We'll just soften that color in there. Just want to get a little green. So Jackie wants to know, is there a cheat sheet for color combinations? Do you mean for ink blending or Jackie or for colored pencils or just for anything in general? If you're having trouble knowing what colors to blend together, I did a video not that long ago on how to use the color wheel to decide what colors you should blend together. And I think it's a helpful video. Um, I use the Roy G. Biv method, which is the rainbow. So Roy G. Biv stands for red, orange, yellow. That's Roy, R-O-Y, red, orange, yellow. And then G is green. So Roy G. And then Biv is blue, indigo, and then violet. So sometimes I substitute blue and indigo for turquoise and blue, but it works. And then I never skip more than one color on the color wheel when I'm blending. So you can see in this case, I'm doing turquoise and green. Well, turquoise and green, if you look at my color wheel that I show in my video, are right next to each other. And I know it's not necessarily, you know, what artists who are schooled the way they do it, but it really works great for crafters. So you could try, look for that video. Um, you'll know it when you see it, you go to my channel and you click on the videos tab and just scroll through the videos till you see all of the ink cubes laid out in rainbow order on the thumbnail. And that's the video. And it tells you a lot of how to blend colors together. And you can use the same information for your colored pencils, for your Copic markers, for your watercolor, and for your Prismacolor pencils. And I mean your ink. So I hope that helps you. So this is coming along pretty nice, huh? We're almost done. And then we'll turn it into a card. I don't even know what time it is. What time is it? Oh, I've got plenty of time. So you can see I'm just adding those little dots here and there. I have to color them all in because I just don't know where the <laughs> die cutting machine is going to cut. Oh, missed one. I love when I look up and people are like, you missed one. <laughs> I've done that before where it just, just totally missed it. I think I'll do the centers of both of these snowflakes too just to make that pop a little bit. I have to color those. See, I missed those too. All right, I'll just grab a little bit here. Yeah, I have the, I'm telling you, you guys are the nicest community. You are not only, you're just so nice. You're so helpful to each other. I love to read the comments whenever I can. Whenever I look up, there's like somebody helping somebody else with a question. And this is the best community. I just love you guys so much for your, your kindness. Okay, so we've got two of those and you can see how they're really popping. And now we're just gonna do these last two. We're gonna do the same kind of thing. We'll just do this area down here. This is very similar to the, to the big one. Not exactly the same. Each of these snowflakes is unique, but We'll just add a little bit here and then we'll cut it out and we'll pop it on a card base and add a greeting. So I'm gonna skip that and I'm gonna come up into here like that. I'm just drawing right around that. It's hard to get in there. Let's see. Tom, I like your word of the day today. If anybody missed it, I talked about my chin hair. <laughs> and Tom suggested crafter shave. <laughs> oh my goodness, we're going to need a t-shirt for that. 
So you can see I'm just coloring all the greens and all the blues first on this one. I think I'll color green here. Why not? Let's be a little bit of a rebel on this one. I think it's still going to look good. This way we'll get that green down at the end. It makes such a difference once you start blending it all out. It looks kind of weird like this. Looks like, what are you doing, lady? All right. And then we'll get some green here. Did I pick up the right green pencil? No. Oh my gosh. I'm using the wrong green. Well, I got to go with it now. Okay, so this one will be the other green. We're, we're adding greens. This green is Kelly green. It's a little more olive. Not intentional, but hey, maybe it'll look okay. We'll see. Hoping for the best. Did anybody notice that and I didn't look up? Am I the only <laughs> one that noticed at the last possible second? Somebody probably noticed. I have to look up more, but it's hard to look up when you're coloring. I'll tell you that. Okay. So we'll get this pushed up into here. Yeah, that really looks pretty. I'm glad we did that part in turquoise. Isn't that nice? This one really looks like a mandala. I love that look. Okay, I think we'll go with a little dot right in here and right here. Now I'm nervous about this green, but what's our motto? It's better than horrible. So hopefully it is. <laughs> if not, I'll just cry. I think it'll be okay. It might be a blessing in disguise. Oh yeah, it looks okay. Maybe it gives the card some interest, right? It looks less olive when you blend it over the turquoise. So maybe I did an injustice by just testing it on the regular cardstock. Maybe I should be testing it over the, um, the ink blend. But I don't think that looks too bad. It looks better than horrible, and that's all one can ever ask for. Okay, almost done this one. We'll do the last one now. I'm going to stick with the same colors up here. Right, the recipient won't notice. And it just gives it a little bit more interest. Now, I can't screw up. i got to use the same one. These are getting a little dull, and these are small areas. So it's always good to keep a sharp point, especially when you're coloring in these super small areas. Last one, everybody. But it does make a difference. And like I said, you know, these are these are the kinds of things that I do when I have no mojo. And I think, I don't know what I want to make. I'm just going to make a background. Maybe I'll use it later when, let's see, that is, okay. Maybe I'll use it later when I need a winter birthday card. Or maybe I'll decide that it's going to be a Christmas card. I don't know yet. This one I will turn into a holiday card, though, because I have to finish the card because I'm going to give it away. And again, if you're new here, uh, and, well, first of all, welcome to the nicest community ever because we have the best members. Um, I don't even know how to color this. What is that? One, two, all right, I guess. I don't know. Uh, we'll do that. Sometimes you can't even, like, see what it is anymore. I don't think that's right, but most of that's getting cut off anyway. Um, so, what was I saying, Tom? <laughs> Are you listening at all? <laughs> I don't even think he's listening now. Um, I forget what I was saying. Somebody tell me what I was saying. Oh, yeah. So... I'm going to make this a card. If you're new to this community, which I know there are new people out here, I give away my cards at the end of the video. And the way you enter to win is just to leave a comment. 
And as soon as you leave a comment, you're entered to win. That's all you have to do. And I am seriously behind. So if you want a card over the last few weeks, I've got a pile of them sitting on my desk because I was out of town for a little bit and I was trying to catch up on videos and make sure our release things were working out for that. So I am behind. So I, I desperately apologize to you guys for that. Um, I'm going to go this way this time. I did the opposite on this one. That's all right. But it's coming. I promise. It's coming. The cards. And then we'll do these last little ones here in the turquoise. That has to be green. And these last ones. There we go. I think we got it. You can see I'm putting pretty good pressure on. It's not the way we're normally taught to color with colored pencils. We're taught to use a very light hand with colored pencils, but you want kind of a thick waxiness um, so that the Gamsol has something to work on. If it's too light, it's not gonna do anything. You need it to be a little bit heavy down there at the bottom. We'll figure out what I'm missing. If I'm missing anything, I can always go back, but I'm trying not to, to miss much. Okay. Ooh, it's pretty in that color. I think that's the same on the other one. Okay. Again, I think most of this is getting cut off, but... And again, if you're if you're just wondering why I didn't cut this panel out first, it's because the die I want to use has stitching around the outside. And if there was stitching all in here, you wouldn't get good colored pencil blending. You wouldn't get good embossing. So I just make my piece of cardstock a little bit bigger than I want to cut it down to. And then I um, cut it down after this way it doesn't mess with the embossing or the ink or the colored pencil. I hope that made sense. Okay, last one. Oh, thank you. I'm glad the videos are relaxing for you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I had one lady tell me when I was teaching a class that she used to put my videos on and it would help her sleep at night. And I, uh, I appreciate that. I, I don't mind that. That's good. That's, that's what I'm here for. I put Tom to sleep all the time when I'm talking to him. Right, hon? Yep. <laughs> he doesn't know what to say anymore. He doesn't know what's going to trigger something. <laughs> yes, dear. I missed something and now I can't even find it right there. That's what I missed. So I'm starting to try to eat healthier again because got a little out of hand. Started last Christmas <laughs> and every day I said, oh, I'll get back on it tomorrow. And I realized I'm making Christmas cards again and I'm still not back on it. So I'm going to try to eat a little healthier, but I don't know. Where's the joy in that? Okay, so now I've got that all done. You can see what that looks like. And I'm gonna cut this out using that die. I know, we do need that t-shirt. It's better than horrible. It's coming. Oh, that's too close. Can you imagine how big this die cutting machine is looking right now for our friends that are watching on a 72 inch television? Like the Holland Tunnel. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I know my New York. All right, where, pray tell, did I put my die? Here it is. All righty. Yeah, last Christmas. All right, so we're going to go heavy toward the top. Get as close as we can. Oh, that's going to be pretty. And then I'm going to cut that out. Ooh, that's dangerous, but let's do it. Let's take a shot. Oh, I hear it clicking. That's good. Okay. Okay. 
Here's my little frame. Gosh, I should use that for something. And then, here it is. There is my, my card, my panel. Now I'm gonna cut a black one. I know, shocking. If you're new here, I put black on every card. You'll learn that really quickly if you watch my videos or you see my uh, <laughs> my pictures out there of my cards. Okay, when I'm cutting, this is the plain one from Master Layouts too. The one that I just cut was the stitched one. And again, when I share those pictures, you'll be able to see that stitching up close. Now this card is so, there's so much work involved in it and I really want to be able to, <laughs> I really want to be able to see all of the coloring. I don't want to cover much of this up at all. So I think I'm just going to put a very delicate small greeting on this, but you can see that little panel goes there. Now for our card base color. So I was thinking, I mean, you know, of course, I'm going to use this again, but I'm just going to put it off to the side for a second. Of course, we could use ocean mist or something like that which would be really pretty right that would be very pretty um let's zoom in a bit sea glass would be pretty i don't have any sea glass here right now um we could go dark and put it up against tranquil teal that would be pretty but i want to see what it looks like up against apple mint i feel like apple mint would be a very very pretty color for this Oh, I don't know now. I don't like it. I can already tell I don't like it. It's too close to everything else that's going on, right? I don't like it. But I got to stick within these greens and blues. I feel like I do. Um, I think maybe we need the dark. I think the dark makes all of the light pop out. Oh, try like soft stone. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me find soft stone. Here's a piece of soft stone. Oh, you know what? I'm going to use white. And here's why. Because there's not much white on here. And I think the white is going to make everything pop. So I'm going to go with the white. I always worry about everybody. Like I... I literally lay in bed and lose sleep over, like, did somebody feel bad that I didn't pick the color they said in the comments? I, I know. And I know you guys aren't like that, but but I'm like that, you know? I'd worry, so don't be mad at me if I didn't pick your color. Okay. So we are out of our heavy base weight white, so I'm going to use layering weight white, and it's okay to do that. You can use layering weight white on your cards. I usually do on the cards that I make in my videos anyway, because they lay nice and flat for taking pictures. So most of the cards, when I mail them out to people, they get layering weight white. Um, with all the layers we do, it's not so bad. Okay. There we go. We got a nice card base there. I don't know why I did it in this orientation. I think you could do it either way, but look, right? Doesn't that pop? That looks good. The white brings, that's right, the white brings out the embossed lines too. You know, we got to try everything. We got to look at it. And I agree with a lot of you that a lot of those other colors are good too. But I think the white really makes it. Now I'm going to put a few little sequins on here and we're going to put a greeting. And the greeting I think I'm going to use is Happy Holidays. I think I'll use that. Because I don't know who this is going to. And when you do it more generic, like just happy holidays, I got some little crud in here from the uh, my dirty plate because I didn't do the trick that I always do. So to avoid that, just put a piece of copy paper over your panel before you put the other plate on top and you won't get the little goobers. And what did you call, what did you say about goobers, Tom? <laughs> well, 
It looked like you were looking for a goober removal tool. Yeah. <laughs> a goobinator. All right, let's stamp up this greeting. I can use this panel since I won't be using that for anything else. And yeah, I think the white's going to look nice. And we'll do a little white greeting. So I am going to I'm going to actually stamp this on white and I'm going to cut it out so that it's going to go over this because you're uh you're not I can't stamp over the embossing. So we'll just do it this way. And I'm going to stamp it in black and that will bring out that little black line around the edge. So I'm going to stamp it twice. That's why I'm using my Misty. Okay, that's one time. And then we'll add some disco ball sequins in here. Although another sequin that would be very pretty for this card is the mermaid scales. I think that would work really nicely too. I'll show you what they look like. I've got them here. See, aren't these pretty? I think that would look really pretty with that combination. A few of those on there, you know, wouldn't that look nice? So you could definitely do that if you have mermaid scales. Okay. The Fresh Prince was born where? In Bel Air? Isn't that where he was born? <laughs> no, he's... You remember oh, that. Philadelphia. Oh, yeah, Philadelphia. That's right. You're what? right. West Philly. West Philly, that's right. But then he got shipped out to Bel Air. That's right. I remember now. I'm sorry. I'm slow today. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I like the font on this too. Now, do I have the right die? Yes, I do. What Here. brand is your electric pencil sharpener, please? Sharpen. My electric pencil sharpener is the iPoint Orbit. It comes in both electric and battery. And this is the battery operated one, but I do have the electric one too, thanks to my sweet friend, Karen Hightower. She sent that to me and got me all, you know, turned on to this uh, brand of pencil sharpener. And I do have a link to it um, on my website. If you hover over the about tab, a little drop down will come down. And there's a little thing that says things I love. And you can click on there and the pencil sharpener is there. So you have a quick link to it. Okay. So I like cutting that out like that because it doesn't take up a whole lot of space, but you know, you're able to see it a little better on the card. So we'll just put this down low like that. And this is great because if you have any spots that you messed up on, you can put them right over. You can put your greeting right over it or any goobers you couldn't get rid of. You couldn't scratch off. All right. Do you have any idea what colors you used on the purple card? Yes, I do. Um, I used, I have it here. I used aquamarine and I used Parma violet for this one. Aquamarine and Parma Violet. So hopefully that helps. So I could glue this or I could tape it. I'm just going to run my tape runner over it. Okay. Doesn't really matter. It's going to work either way. And we'll just put this down here. Gosh, you know, you just don't want to cover anything, right? I think it should go right about there. There we go. Okay, and then we'll add a few sequins in here. So I'm going to use my Connect Glue. I go over every single week now. Every time I'm on, I go over, but you guys are so worth my time. I love spending time with you. All right, I'm going to put one there. And I think I'll use Disco Ball just because it's simple. I'm really loading up the sequins on this one. Okay, get one down there too. All right, so let me find the disco ball. Here they are. Oh my gosh, look at my disco ball sequence. They've got like pieces of things in them. There we go. Get a few of these out. Okay, let's see. So in the areas that 
have a lot of space, I'll use the bigger ones. And then where I have like two together, I probably will use small ones. There's a small spot right there. Let's see. There's one. And we'll put one here. And then once they're all in place, then I'll press on them with the other side. Put that one there. I really love a little glitter on my cards. Don't you guys? And sequins are so fun. So if you're new to sequins, you want to put them so that the cup side is going up, cupward, as Tom would say. Right, Tom? Yes, cupward. Cupward. Stick one there like that. And we'll do a couple tinies over here. A little one there. What tool are you using to pick up the sequence? So this is the Gina K Designs Pick and Stick tool. It's a new tool that we just came out with. It's sold out like in the first day. Um, but we have another couple of thousand of them on the way. Um, and what I love about this tool is we did the cap so it's easy to determine which side you're using because we did a white cap for the wax tip and we did a silver cap for the silver poker end. So it's very easy to use. Oh, isn't that pretty? That came out really nice, huh? I love all that glitter. Now, if you want, if you prefer to have something in the center of the sequins, you could go back and you could add, you know, a sequin in the center. You could add tiny sequins to these centers instead of just sticking with the, um, the color. Kind of like that, actually. So maybe I'll do that. Why not? I mean, it's pretty. This is very pretty, but Number one, it gives me a chance to use the really big sequin, which I love. And then I'll use some of the small ones. So the really biggest sequin is this one. And then we need some more of these tinies. Use the side to just put it in place. That one's in place. That was, that was lucky. I was thinking, yeah, I could just nail it, but that generally doesn't happen. And I'm getting glue on the end here, so I've got to kind of clean my little end and get some of that glue off so it lets go better. If it gets too gluey, the sequins stick to it, but they stick to any jewel picker, same way. So you do have to clean the tip every once in a while, but it's a wax tip. And we are going to get wax um, refills for the tip too, because over time, you know, if the wax cracks or if it just starts to wear down, let's put a little pressure on those just to get them in place. Okay, that's that's enough. I can't do any more to this card today, but that is my finished card. So I hope you like it, and I hope that I must turn the camera off, Tom, um, <laughs> the front camera <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, just another day. <laughs> <laughs> trying to zoom out. I almost just shut us down. So there it is. All the nice sparkle and shine. Isn't that fun? And the coloring is so fun. It's very soft and very relaxing to do. And I think, you know, I mean, snowflake cards, you don't put your greeting on. Just leave the greeting off until you're ready and you can pop a birthday greeting on or whatever you want. But let's give this one away, Tommaso. Hey, 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 hey. All right. All right. We got a drum roll. For the big, big giveaway. <laughs> and the winner is Kathy Planter. Kathy hey, Kathy, Planter. congratulations. <sighs> Kathy, all you have to do is send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com, and I will get this card out to you. Well, everybody, I hope that you enjoyed today's video, tonight's video. I hope you'll give this technique a try. Tom and I will be back on Thursday at noon 
for another Crafternoon Live. And then I'll be back over the weekend with another five minute card video. If you like this video and you like the channel, I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up and you would subscribe to my channel. That does so much to help my channel. It gets it out there for new crafters so that they can get hooked into our community and fall in love with this hobby too. All right, everybody. Well, We'll be back later this week. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. I love you all so very much. So do you, Tom, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> we'll see you again real soon. Bye.